Also, more trouble, legal trouble, potentially, for former President Donald Trump. His attorney representing him in the Justice Department's probe into classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago took highly detailed notes about their conversation. A particular note, the former president wanted to push back against the Justice Department's efforts to recover those classified documents, or at least asked his lawyers if it would be possible to fight that subpoena. The notes are now from Trump's lawyer, Evan Corcoran, are now in the hands of the special counsel, Jack Smith. Also, sources tell CNN prosecutors have subpoenaed the Trump Organization for information about business deals with foreign companies, specifically in countries that may have been interested in the types of classified materials recovered from the former president at Mar-a-Lago. The Trump Organization has just released a statement. Let me read it to you in part. Quote, we made a strict pledge to not enter in any new foreign deals while President Trump was in office, a commitment that the company fully complied with. Joining us now, CNN political commentator Earl Lewis and former Manhattan assistant district attorney Jeremy Salon. Good to have you both. I, Jeremy, let me just start with you. It's normal that a attorney, a good attorney, Evan Corcoran, would take detailed notes. How... how they got to the media is, is another question, but the fact that Jack Smith has them now after such a fight to, to get to this point regardless, how could this impact the investigation? Well, on its face, people can think or assume that the president is just saying, hey, I want to fight this, and this is a reasonable conversation to have. It might be, right? We should give him that. Well, you certainly should, but at the same time, that's a direct look into his intent mm -hmm. and his knowledge that these are documents that are classified, these are documents I have to return. That I shouldn't have. Correct. But nonetheless, I'm going to find a way to challenge it. And there's legal means to do so. And then there's not legal means to do so. So it kind of defeats that argument that oh, I didn't so know. That's so interesting. I wanted to ask about attorney-client privilege. I couldn't help myself when I heard that the, the notes of one of his attorneys um, was sort of in the hands of Jack Smith. Can they use that if they, you know, if they deem, look, we got these can't say how, but we, we have them. Well, you'd certainly raise it as a defense, but uh, as we know, uh, attorney-client privilege is defeated if uh, what right. is going on is an attempt to either commit or obstruct okay, the, uh, the investigation of a crime. And, and in, in that case, he's right back where he started. So, um, you know, the, the, what, what's really going to matter is what, what else went on in that conversation. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to, <clears throat> to learn that uh, Donald Trump asked, uh, can we sort of fight against the subpoena? Uh, but what else was said? What, what did the attorneys then tell him? How did he react to that? That's where it's going to start to get sticky, I think. Yeah, that's really interesting. Actually, um, yeah. It's interesting because that's the defense Nixon tried to use, and then the Supreme Court said, look, you're, you, you, you can only do this to a certain point, and when we're investigating a crime, you can't. Let's turn the table here on what E. Jean Carroll is trying to do after winning that uh, sexual battery and defense case against a former president. She's now trying to open up an ongoing case to add more Jeremy of Trump's words in the CNN town hall defaming her into that. Do you think she'll be successful? As a matter of law, there was a determination by that verdict that his words were malicious and defamatory. And he doubled down and continued that. So it's not necessarily, well, let me take, take that back. It's amending that, that ongoing complaint that already started from 2000, uh, from the previous complaint. Yeah. And it establishes and confirms that the president was willing to be malicious, knew it was, and it wasn't just his opinion. He was really using some of the same words that he was found liable for almost moments ago. I have a question about recent polling, Errol, to you. The numbers have gone up. Even after the for Trump, for Trump for, even after the liability, the five million dollars that he has to pay, according to the judge, E. Jean Carroll, um, you're seeing these numbers trend up. Why is that? Yeah, I mean, one part of it, a very core thing that you have to keep in mind is that most people are not paying attention to these things. And so uh, in whatever capacity Donald Trump's name gets mentioned and he gets national exposure, it reminds some people, oh, I kind of liked him or he used to be our president or I might vote for him next year, something like that. And so you'll start to see some of those those things uh, uh, play themselves out. Uh, does it necessarily mean that people look at him favorably and think that this means that he should be president because he is he just lost a, another case or is is been indicted criminally in new york city i don't think so i i couldn't help this what? i get a lot of um sort of solicitation for money from from all the parties because i've as a reporter gone to a lot of right. things and so what you see sometimes is these cases being used as like look they're coming after me please give 5 10 25 i mean it is being used as a fundraising tool it is, and it's, I use the term funny, but that's really not appropriate. The argument has always been the deep state is after me, and, right. and it, look, they're coming after me. But 
what the deep state, it's not, it's a state of mind in his words that's getting him deeper and deeper in trouble. And ultimately, this is going to catch up to him. He's got Georgia, he's got the city of New York, now he's got the federal program that's been ongoing. So it's just one on top of the other. And the more he does this and the more he uses his words without his counsel and evidently even with his counsel, mm -hmm. the more he's going to find himself in deeper trouble legally. And I would not be shocked ultimately if he, if he does end up incarcerated, which is something I would not have thought months ago or even Why do you weeks ago. Now? Because there's so many different things that are developing that are really significant crimes. You're taking documents and materials that are confidential and you're using them to your advantage or concealing them. There's an ongoing investigation and you're knowingly taking steps to prevent the government from rec rec retrieving the, that property. Uh, that just sort of furthers the, my belief and I think many people, though as I always say, the people and, or the government have to prove their case beyond a reasonable doubt, that there is something amiss here and it's just continuation and continuation of trouble that he's getting himself into with his words that are contradictory and his actions that arguably speak for himself. And if you recall, in the federal matter, the judge said on its face, there's criminality. That's a lower standard. Enough to continue, it's a correct. lower standard to continue the probe. Correct, correct. And allowing the piercing of that privilege because of the crime fraud exception. So th there's something here. You can't just say where there's smoke, there's fire, but it's building and building. And I would be very concerned if I were Donald Trump. Wow. Jeremy Errol, thank you. As always, good to see you.